Hey there YouTube, this is Phil for Sandman again. Um, just doing an update on the Honda Elite. Um, if you can see, it's put back together. I'm pretty sure I have that in my last video. And it's running really nice, and it's all good. and It's running beautifully, I would rather say. Uh, and I'm just doing a quick update and new things I've put onto it. Since I don't get my motorcycle license, I, I can't really afford the insurance so it's not much getting the license it's just paying for the insurance so until I get money for insurance um, I'm gonna be doing slight modifications you know cheap you know affordable I need like eight hundred dollars to pay for all the stuff I need to do to it but so far under a budget what I've done is I've added a 212 volt or twin 12 volt power socket outlet I know it looks messy in the back it's just the wires are just, they're not tucked away yet. But it's a really, I mean, it's a good job, I think. It's bolted up really nice, even. Um, I got the little, let me push it in a little bit further. There you go. It's got the little green light. I just bought this today. It's a mini USB. You just plug it straight in. I thought it was cool. It's like six bucks. It's a Duracell, and it's got a limit. It's lifetime warranty, so that's like the cool thing about it. I mean, I know that I've had a lot of these things break on me, so yeah, and uh, I'm going to test that real quick. I just bought that one today, so I don't know if that works. Um, the 12 volt power outlet was 12 bucks, but I got it on sale for 9 um, and it was really easy to install. I'll show you here in just a second, making sure this works. Yep. Okay, so it's charging my phone. And, uh, let me see here. Ten millimeter. Sorry about the camera. <laughs> All right. So it's right that bolt right there. If you can see it, that's what holds on the, uh, battery uh, reservoir fill up cover whatever you want to call it so, sorry it's hard doing this with one hand so here's the whole cover so it's right here attached into the positive wired through and all the way up to the dashboard up to here and through the glove compartment and then the second wire, I, this panel's a pain in the butt to take off, but um, through the second wire, it just goes literally, it goes straight up right here and bolts onto the, the actual metal part, the ground, goes right here. Um, next, I need to get a fuse. I mean, I have a, a few 15 amps and a couple of 20s, but I want to get a really new, a, a good fuse with a switch. So I don't have to keep on slightly plug unplugging that to disable the power so I don't drain my battery, which would take forever for a little thing like that. But, you know, I don't want to have to worry about that. So I'll probably just install a few a switch, like, up right up there somewhere on the glove compartment. So, yeah. And then the next thing, I just ordered it probably like 40 minutes ago. It's a Tiny Tash digital tachometer. Sorry, hard to say. Um, it's it's an hour. It tracks the engine's running hour, running time, and it tracks the uh, the RPM. Uh, all the other ones were I wanted. There's a really nice one that's two inch smokestack, and, and it's really nice. It's got multicolor LEDs, and it's like forty bucks. But the only problem is that I read on I read the line that only it's compatible with a four stroke or four stroke a four cylinder, six cylinder, and eight cylinder. This is a one cylinder, and they said, oh, you can hook it up to the ignition coil, and then I, I was going to do that and just buy it, but I read a line that it doesn't have the gift to multiple, it's just not the right number, it's not accurate, it's just that's the setting on it, so I just went ahead, and, and that was 40 bucks, free shipping, but I didn't, I didn't buy it, so I went ahead and got the Tiny Tash, and it's about that big, it's not even, it's relatively small, it's got a basic, I think, seven binary or seven segment uh, 
digital clock. It looks like your alarm, a cheap alarm clock, and it would go. For me, I'm going to put it right there, or right there on the. Uh, I mean, not right there. I don't know what I'm thinking. Sorry, it's going to go on the dash right here, so it's going to be facing up enough to where the windshield. When I get the new windshield for this, it won't uh, be blocking it. It's not that big, so. And uh, I just want to get an accurate reading because this one doesn't have one. It's, I guess, it didn't come with it. And when it's when you're doing like 40, you can you this thing will do about 65, 70. I've read a line and I've had it up to 58, 59 or something like that. And it's it'll can cruise in the neighborhood I live in. It's like 35. And I would just I don't know what I'm doing, what higher PMs I'm at because it's it's just hard to tell. And I don't want to risk overheating it, so I could basically just coast it when it gets too hot. And I think it'd be a nice addition to it. I've read a lot of things online that, that a lot of people complain. Not having the new mopeds, not having an RPM gauge, tachometer. And I got a cheap Chinese one over here. Surprisingly, it does have a tachometer. It just doesn't have a heat gauge. This one goes up to 10,000, which I've had it up to, surprisingly or not. And it, it just rattles the engine loose pretty much. But, yeah. So, that's the update. Um... What else am I going to get to it? Um, I might re be replacing the roller bear roller weights and the clutch housing, I think, or the pulley housing, the doctor pulleys. And I want to get the high-speed ones because this, this thing gets up to about 40 in like 10 seconds, which is for Mopa, it's pretty good. And it, keep, it just keeps on climbing, but it has a little bit of trouble getting past 55. It just doesn't want to seem to crawl past that. So, I want to get those, and then it's 26 years old, and the clutch, the clutch is 26 years old, so it's starting to wear out. I can tell it's not, it's losing its power. So, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll get my next video for the RPM gauge installed, and it's an it clocks the hour running time. It's uh, pretty simple. You just hook it up. It literally wraps around the spark plug wire. You don't even have to connect it. You just wrap the one side around the spark plug wire, and then the second one you uh, is a ground, it's, and you just bolt it to any bolt on the engine, you know, connected to the frame. And the only problem I can see with that is the spark plug, the ignition coil is right here, runs down, spark plug's about behind this panel, and I would have to run it all the way through here, or through here to there, up to here. So I don't, I think it maybe gave me seven feet of wire not quite sure it said on the instructions that you'll have enough to wrap it up i hope so um because the actual wire you cannot cut like some wires it just it can't you can't extend it it's a certain type of wire that reads the pulses from the electricity from the spark plug wire i don't know the ignition coil so hopefully that'll work and i'll get a video of that so yeah thanks for watching sorry for the long video